Hello. You have probably all been in a situation when a teacher asks a question in class. You know the answer, but you are afraid of getting it wrong, so you don't dare say anything. Prefer to stay silent. Then someone else, a braver one, answers the same exact question. They call out what you were thinking but could not say because of uncertainty, since you were too afraid to answer. That's when your eyes are filled with tears, but you can't cry in a classroom. It's embarrassing, so you try to hold your tears back. Now all the moisture you had in your eyes goes down, turning into a huge lump in your throat. Which is why you don't talk, because if you do, people will notice the voice cracks you have, so you stay silent. I was that exact kid who knew, but didn't say. And this problem got in my way whenever I wanted to make good impression, get good grades, or just participate during lessons. Almost every day, I listen to teachers' questions, which I had answers to. There are also thoughts of raising my hand, but throughout this hesitation, while I would play out all the best scenarios that could result from me giving the answer, my classmates were already yelling it out, happily and proudly. That's when my eyes got filled with tears and my heart was sadness. I was little by then, so I could not really control my emotions, even though I tried my best. And that's why the sleeves of my shirts always ended up dewy and my notebooks were drenched with tears. At first, I used to get upset, even angry sometimes, but after a while, it became normal and an everyday thing, a habit. Even though I knew that I would only raise my hand in order to use the restroom, some part of me never gave up. I mean, sometimes I would get the urge to answer a question or yell it out like my classmates did, but I never ended up doing it. So the bell rang and we had a math lesson. Our teacher explained a new material and we started doing different exercises. After a while, my name was called and my heart started racing fast and I could not stop my leg. It was shaking terribly. But I still tried my best not to look nervous and I looked into the book. I was reading slowly, quietly and in a fearful voice. You could actually hear the voice cracks if you listened to me carefully. After I finished reading, the room was silent. Everyone was waiting for me to answer the simplest question. The environment was extremely confusing. The teacher was looking at me angrily, and the students who were proudly and mockingly raising their hands were eagerly waiting my wrong answer. Or they thought that I would get it wrong, but suddenly and really unexpectedly, a huge wave of excitement just hit me. I knew the answer and I was 100% certain that it would be correct. So I straightened up confidently and you could see the happiness and joy in my eyes. I was about to answer when all of a sudden my classmate yelled out. I got terribly angry but I couldn't do anything. After the lesson, my classmate was rewarded with a sticker. All I got was a look of reproach. According to my teacher, it took too long for me to come up with an answer. And ever since that day, I hated mathematics. And soon, this problem started affecting all my grades, which I was really nervous about. Obviously, my mother noticed that, so we all together jointly decided to get a math tutor for me. I was being tutored for about a year or so, and happily the hard work paid off. I started raising my hand. Obviously, a lot of students made mistakes, including me. But I realized that making mistakes was normal and school was there to teach and develop us. This realization was the best feeling, but sadly, it did not last long. COVID pandemic began and schools got shut down, so we started online learning. By that time, I thought that this would have been the best opportunity for me to gain confidence. But I couldn't have been more wrong. After a year, in-person classes resumed, but with a little change, we had to wear masks, and that's when my problems began. I got so used to wearing this mask that I refused to take it off. This was my defense mechanism and my comfort zone, which I did not want to leave. I actually remember I stopped eating at school because I had to take my mask off, and that was the least thing I wanted to do. I also realized how hard it was for me to communicate with people. Have a simple conversation or a dialogue, talk about a lesson that we had, or just raise my hand and answer a question in class. And I realized that I was going back in time when I was afraid to put my hand up, fearing not to be wrong. 
This caused other problems such as bad comments from teachers and low grades. I did not want to take the same route and go through the same again. One day, in eighth grade, our teacher assigned us to make presentations. I was not happy with the news. The idea of giving a presentation scared me a little, but I would somehow manage to speak in front of like 15 people, but I was not delighted with the news either. But do you see, that's where I was wrong because the number of audience we had to present of was 100 people, and 100 was a huge number. I was just too stunned to speak, and you could see the shock on my face. I had just heard the news, and I was already stressing out. I kept thinking what would happen if somebody or something interrupted my speech. If somebody laughed at me or if I forgot the words, maybe something went wrong. I used to wake up thinking about the presentation, and I used to go to bed with the same thoughts for two weeks. I had worked really hard to make an amazing presentation and an interesting speech. But my teacher kept criticizing my work like it was nothing but a piece of useless paper. And I didn't think she understood how much time, effort, and energy I put in all of my writings. I mean, I used to sit in front of my computer for hours trying to find the best piece of information just so that she could say how bad it was. I mean, what did she expect from a 13-year-old girl, huh? Come on, as if I was a professor. But However, every remark that she gave me was complimented with words, emphasizing my strengths, reminding me how high her hopes were for me, how proud she would be of me that I was the best that I could be, that I myself didn't know it yet, that my presentation was worth being shared with others in order to inspire and encourage them. Overall, my teacher's lecture <laughs> inspired as a motivational force to finish my work, and that's what I did. So now, I am about to stand in front of a huge audience. I am picturing my lovely home, my room, and the warmth and coziness I feel there. I just want to vanish from here and be with my little dog, but sadly, that's impossible. They say my name in a microphone, and it's too loud. Now it's my turn to present with my mask, of course. I mean, that's the only thing protecting me at the moment. I will just hide behind this mask, and nobody will see me or how nervous I am. That's my plan to survive. I am about to begin one. All of a sudden, I see my teacher gesturing with her hands. I can't hear her, but I can't understand through her gestures that she wants me to take my mask off. And I am devastated. I remove this mask, and as soon as I do that, I feel as if a huge secret just got revealed. I really want to cry, but I can't. I really want to leave the room and just go home, but I can't do that either. So I do the only thing possible and suitable for the moment. I start talking. At first, I skipped some sentences, rambled, missed a few words, and I forgot about a whole paragraph. But I kept talking, and I was getting angry with myself. I mean, what was I even afraid of? Suddenly, I can notice my teacher looking at me, proudly. She is listening, but not only her, the audience too. They are listening, and they seem to like what I have to say. After a while, it got better. I became more competent. After the presentation, I was exhausted, but happy. I felt proud of myself, and I could not recognize myself. I felt as if I was capable of achieving way more than I might have imagined before. You think I'm comfortable now? I mean, this is just another challenge and a new episode of my story. But I realized that I have to work on my shyness and fears in order to grow. We should not give up on our dreams because our different phobias that we may have. It is time to make our voice heard. I know that I can, and I know that you can too. All you need is to believe in yourself. Thank you.